Welcome to episode 335 of the Shared Security Podcast. And this week, we'll be talking about the recent call by the Surgeon General in the United States to create warning labels for social media, just like they do with cigarettes. Pros, cons, who knows, but we'll be debating both, so stay tuned for that discussion. And then in our Aware Much segment, Scott is going to be bringing up another hotly debated topic. Should you store passwords in your web browser? Oh yes, this one is probably going to anger some people, so we will see. And joining me for those conversations and more are my two co-hosts, Scott Wright and Kevin Johnson. Hi. I'm, we're just regular co-hosts. I have so many odd comments to make, I think. Great. I, I feel like it's important because I do feel like I have bugs crawling all over me that I'm going to explain this. I talked Tom and Scott beforehand. If you're watching the video and I'm like, Ugh. I had the EKG done today and they shaved 10 patches on my chest. And I, I could never tell you if I felt like I had hair on my chest, but I can dang straight tell you that I have dead patches where I don't. Yeah. I'm uh, so uncomfortable. So uh, Ke Kevin has bugs in his shirt, I do not basically, have bugs, is what's but it going on. feels like it. <laughs> Oh. We'll tell you if we want you to turn your video off, Kevin. Yeah. Yes. Well, moving on from Kevin's chest problems, we uh, have <laughs> just an update to a story we covered. Actually, everybody was covering several weeks ago, Microsoft's recall, which, by the way, was our most popular, I think, YouTube video mm -hmm. ever, <laughs> which is amazing. But they have apparently delayed the release. Microsoft has delayed the release because of security concerns. Big surprise there. So the Copilot Plus PCs apparently have been released today. I know this because I got a pop-up from Amazon and I had clicked it and I saw, oh, look at all these new Copilot Plus P PCs that will run recall. But then they have a disclaimer saying, Recall is actually part of like this preview program, so it'll come out in a future update. So, yeah. so that's good. I, I think that's good that they are reevaluating their release because of all this research that I heard. the out. The biggest so. news I think I heard was that they're making it not on by default. Is that right? Well, I have heard that, but I don't think anybody can say yeah, yes okay. or no. Remains to, that. to right, be okay. seen. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like until they release it, and I held up a Surface Pro recall laptop thing because i got one today yeah okay. i or i the minute they announced it i ordered one and my plan is to play with it but yes. I'm, I'm i'm approaching it from what i believe is a slightly different perspective than the mm -hmm. other people who've done some stuff not i'm not saying i'm oh i'm better or whatever i'm just saying it's different i'm trying to evaluate it from how it is rolled out in an enterprise joined laptop yeah right like does it oh, change good. stuff does things happen there and so we will see, but yes, they postponed it. I don't, I think it's good, but I'm not sure that we, that they, that they postponed it. I'm not sure we can say they postponed it because of the research, right? Because at the same time, they, they left they announced, it, yeah, they, they, they left it very ambiguous. Yeah. Right. And it was at the exact same time that they were testifying in Congress about all the reports about how they, mm -hmm. right? Like there, there were so many other things going on that I, and I don't think it matters. I don't think we'll ever have an answer. They postponed it. I don't expect them to fix it. I expect them to raise the bar. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't think there's a way to fix the underlying privacy issue with taking a screenshot of whatever is on your screen at any time and analyzing yeah. it and training uh, an LLM on it. Like I, I, I don't, I, I, uh, bluntly, I do not believe it is possible to fix those privacy issues. The e discovery issues, the legality mm. issues, the, the like all of that kind of stuff. I don't think you can. I think though that it's something that we are going to have to accept. Yeah. Uh, what you know, I'm not just saying recall or is something we have to accept. I think that as we move more and more toward I AI driven as much as I hate the fact that it's really not AI, but AI driven mm -hmm. functionality. That functionality is going to require a level of privacy absolution by our yeah. report, right? And we're going to have to make the decision if we're okay with that. Personally, we've had this conversation a million times. I assume that almost everything I do is 
not private. So I'm okay with it in many cases. I will not have recall turned on on a machine I'm doing client work on. Mm -hmm. And the reason I won't is not just because the NDA is I have signed, but because I don't think I have the authority or the right yeah. to give up that privacy for my client, right? Does that, yeah. so my client machine is here. It won't have recall on it. The machine I'm playing with, with recall to try stuff out is a fresh machine that will not have client data on it. Right. Like I, I'm doing that separation. I don't think most people can. Well, we shall see what happens. So uh, let's talk about the Surgeon General and the new call to label social media as harmful to adolescents. Before we talk about yes. labeling social media, can we just discuss the fact that the Surgeon General is a vice admiral in the public health yes. service and this wears a uniform and has medals? Yeah. Um, I, yeah. This has always like, been the case. I know. I, I know. I know it's mm -hmm. always been the case, but it's so weird to me. Yeah. And I get that they're considered a military part of the branch yes. of the military. I get that. I just, and I was never in the military. So I'm, I'm offended for other people. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, my opinion of people who are offended for other people. Right. Yes. I just, that's, I feel yeah. like it's a little disrespectful. I don't know. And maybe uh, I'm probably wrong. But, I was in and, the military, but I, I'm fine with it. I okay, don't know. Okay. I mean, See, I just like know I said, that. I'm offended I, for other people. Well, okay. Well, it, it is interesting, but and, and we have a, a link in the show notes to an article from the EFF, which always love EFF stuff. And they bring yes. up some interesting things to consider, including there is no scientific consensus that social media harms children's mental health, even though I think we all agree that it definitely does impact I, I would say children. anecdotally, we can say it mm -hmm. harms the oh, yeah. children. I happen to agree with the EFF, though, which I know is a common refrain when I talk about yeah. things with the EFF. But I think it's great that the U.S. Surgeon General is pushing for the election of whatever candidate he supports by <laughs> calling out against <laughs> That's where social this is media. Going. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe that there is any benefit doing this even if they label it let's 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 ignore like the how do you thing. label it yeah like, that's what i'm saying on let's every ignore... tweet every what I, post like how how does I, that work no i i think that that what you do is you label it during the sign up and i and i i'm not saying this is a solution i'm saying this is what yeah. they'll probably push for is that at the sign up when what we will have is when you go to a social media site the first time you go to the social media site or the first time a day or whatever you'll get the pop-up that GDPR caused, which is we have cookies. Mm -hmm. We will have the pop-up that says, hey, if you're under 15, this is dangerous. And then you'll be able to use the site. That, yeah. I mean, that's all this is going to accomplish is another set of pop-ups that people click through. Well, and, and I'll use the secret example. Yeah. How many people do you know smoke? I'm not going to ask if either of you do. I don't. I never have. I have bad lungs, but... I, how many people do you know smoke? I know a lot of people that used to smoke, but okay, don't but smoke anymore. When they smoke, okay, but but why did they quit? The label on the package? No, right. They quit I, on their own. No, no label. And now, I mean, that's that's my point. There's no yeah. label. Said you're you're just smoking one day, and you look at the label, and you're like, man, the government's right. I, I got to stop smoking. I, I, like I don't know anybody who smoked or <laughs> smokes. That thought to themselves, man, I thought this was healthy. I Not today. Yeah. I, I know that I, like 50 years ago, 70 years ago, it was presented. I mean, doctors I, were on ads telling you about the health benefits of sucking down burning smoke. Yeah. We but all know it's bad for you. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows it. And people still do it. There is a reason that cigarettes still are one of the highest earning vices out there, right? Well... It goes back to even in the music industry. Remember, you know, the late eighties, early nineties when the PMRC? You know, Al Gore, Al Gore's wife mandated Tipper. your Tipper Gore, right? The explicit, yeah. you know, labels on music CDs. Which just told me which records to buy. I know. <laughs> like that's all you like, did was oh hey, that one's explicit. I'm buying yeah. it. I, I mean, completely useless. So it's... like I I don't I don't see the point. I think it's another government overreach thing that, you know, like you said, it could be politically motivated. 
And Scott, I don't believe it's completely politically. Motivated. Well, no, but yeah. Scott, what's your take? Is like, I, I mean, do you guys have labeling stuff in Canadian, like Canada? Canadian. Like, do you label cigarettes? Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're not allowed that? to have yeah. news okay. on their social yeah, media yeah. site. Oh, we have we have most of the same same, same things thing. you guys do, and uh, I, I guess it's it, it's hard for me to come down on one side of it. It's a really tough place to make a sweeping statement about. I have certainly seen the ill effects of people who are, especially young people who get addicted to it and who have mental health issues and a lot of stress from overuse. And yeah, you can blame the parents, but what are they supposed to do, right? Ban their kid from using their phone and then they get ostracized and, you know, harassed even worse. It's a really tough problem. I mean, they say in the article, literacy, market choice, and privacy laws are all going to be promoted or a better way. But yeah, it's wise, but I don't think it is clearly going to have much of an effect either. I mean, I guess the fact that, I guess in Canada, probably in the States too, you know, there's, there are a lot of restrictions on ads for cigarettes and alcohol and gambling and stuff like that, right? But even gambling now is becoming, it was somehow deregulated to some extent here in Ontario and you can't watch a sports event on TV now without tons of gambling ads. This is off the topic, yeah, but same. the whole idea is, you know, how much will advertising and public relations campaigns actually make a, a difference? And I don't know what other interventions there could be. I mean, maybe you just have to live with this stuff and try and, I guess, educate the teens before they get into it to understand what's worth stressing about and what's not and, and when to ask for help. But uh, aside from that, it's it's a very tough thing. Well, we'll uh, link this in the show notes and everyone can have their take on what they think about labeling programs for social media. Quite interesting. So, Scott, are you yes, ready Tom. for our favorite segment, Aware Much? <laughs> Yes, Tom, this is a safe space to aware much. There's oh, yes. no shame in acknowledging <laughs> that we may be vulnerable to cyber attacks. And we should be using security technology wherever we can for, you know, consistency, scalability, you know, to, to protect what, what information can be protected automatically that we are not that good at ourselves. But one of the age old problems, or at least since the first compatible time sharing system in MIT in 1960 that use passwords is how do we manage our passwords? And we've all got our favorite methods. I'm sure Tom and Kevin probably yep. memorize them, you know, memorize a formula nope. that you substitute every website nope. you go to or whatever. No, nope. no, no, <laughs> no. Most, many of us have relatives, I think, who reuse the same password everywhere or who store their passwords in a word document and then rename it very intelligently to be something like unimportant stuff.exe to foil the bad guys. <laughs> But most security professionals advocate for a reputable password manager, and a lot of them stipulate probably shouldn't be one that's built into the browser. But there was a statement made by a Mr. Robert Hersevec, who is well known from the Sharp Tank and also a Canadian, advocating that people should use the browser's built-in password storage capabilities. So it's certainly a convenient option. What do you guys think? Well, I, I brought up this story because this was a post on LinkedIn and I, if you read through the comments on LinkedIn, there are some very strong opinions yeah. about not using your browser to store passwords. And most of most of the comments are from people that are in like forensics and that that deal with you know how people are compromised or how organizations are, and they will state that you know attackers go after the browser because of the way that the passwords are stored. Now, I would argue that point that, sure, can it happen? Possibly. But is, you know, is it better to, to store your passwords in a very insecure way versus using that's already something available to you and is somewhat easy to use because it's built into your browser? I would choose it. I would say it's better than nothing. Yeah. I think most security experts opinion. would probably have risk, to agree to that, right? It's better than the nothing. The risk to the yeah. normal person of having your browser exploited and your passwords exposed, I think is extremely low, in my opinion. But, th but it what does do happen think, occasionally, Kevin? right? Vulnerabilities in browsers. Well, well of course. Yeah, happens. Yeah, Everything yeah, happens yeah. occasionally, right? Yeah. I, I, I think, I, one, I'll start this with very simply, I agree. Uh, Tom's right. 
Uh, this is, in my opinion, one of the one of the examples of our industry showing our ass. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Sure. Right? Like we regularly do this. Blah, blah, blah. They're writing down passwords. Yeah, they are. Like, uh, okay, cool. I I don't like it. I don't right. But I will tell you right now. You know, when my my father in law died. If he had not had passwords written down, my yeah. ex-wife would have had no ability mm -hmm. to solve the issues she was dealing with. And and there is an example where this helps, right? Is it possible? I'm not even going to say theoretically possible. I'm going to mm -hmm. say, is it possible that an attacker can get control of their workstation and steal all those passwords? Yes. Do you know what else the attacker can do when they get control of that workstation? steal all of their passwords as they take them in. <laughs> anyway. right, like, I, you know, like, yeah, it's game over. I, yeah. This is where we talk about, like, remember, what was it, four, five, six years ago, maybe more than that, when it was like Google Nest. If an attacker gets physical control of your Google mm -hmm. Nest, they can replace the framework, fr firmware. Yes, they can. They can also steal the money that's sitting on the counter. I, <laughs> like, I, we, as an industry, have to stop yelling loudly every single time somebody does something that is possibly insecure because you know what i'm tired that simple right i'm tired and if i'm tired the guy that loves this stuff how do you think jane doe and john schmo feel yeah. every time they turn around and they're trying to do something that makes their life easier while maintaining the level of security they believe they need whether they're wrong or right Bite me. Should we recommend a password manager? Yes. Should we recommend that they use the generator that creates a very strong, very long, complex passphrase? Yes. But is them using the password manager that Google gave them better than them using mom or password or yes? Baby steps, yep, people. Yep. Baby so steps. to make a very it's to make a very fine point, then just out of interest, do either of you guys yeah. store any of your passwords in a password or in a uh, browser built-in password manager? I don't use the browser built-in password manager. I I have it turned off because every one of my browsers yeah, has Bitwarden exactly. installed. I yep. so there's so for me, I've got the next level up. There's no right. reason to use that password manager. And as a matter of fact. For me, it's more of an inconvenience. Yeah, I don't want duplicates and yeah, other. Yeah, I go to a website, craziness. I create an account, I use the generated yep. password from Bitwarden yeah. as long as I can use in that site. And if I left the password manager from the browser on, I would get the pop up twice. <laughs> right, I'd get the one from Bitwarden saying you want me to save this, and then I'd get the one from you know Edge or Google or yeah. whatever asking to save. I'll this, admit so. that sometimes I, for convenience, I. I haven't logged into my password manager and I, it pops up and it says, do you want to store it? And I'll say, yeah, because it's a stupid, like it's a test site or something like that. And I, I'm going to have to ed enter stuff. And then I do get those pop-ups. Scott, I would do the same You know, thing. I get... I would do the exact same thing without... Like, I don't think that's No, stupid. but it, I then I end up getting fine. frustrated because next time I go and I am logged in and the pa password manager ah, puts okay. it in and then the other one puts it in and goes, yeah. it's the wrong password. But it's the right one in the password manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, well, and if I didn't turn it off, I would. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. idea. If you're going to use yeah. a real password manager, turn off the other one. And that makes, makes a lot of sense. So I think, yeah, m most professionals would say, yes, we should use a, a good password manager. But as, as I agree with the, these guys, you know, it, it makes sense in some cases for people to use it rather than nothing. So makes it, you know, a good point. I would also say. It's, it's good from a security by diversity point of view, right? I mean, if you want to get semantic about it, you know, it's like having something different storing your passwords than you use every day for your browser can, can in increase the strength, but not enough for, you know, us to argue that everybody needs to do that. So for some people, it might make sense in low sensitivity use cases. And, and really they're not getting, uh, much different in terms of use, right? I mean, a, the real purpose-built password managers are getting as easy to use as the built-in ones. It's just a question of whether you've logged into it or not. And so that's where I think you see it. But I still try, try not to use the browser password manager. 
Anyways, this install was brought to you by ClickArmor, the interactive security training platform designed for the future. Based on the need for upcoming role-based security training, remedial security training, and I think now more uh, discussion of vertical industry requirements for teaching people about the security of different workflows and terminologies and things like that that aren't really covered in your stock video security training. It's very hard for these kinds of things to be tailored. So with Click Armor, it's easy uh, and quick to tailor content for especially things like policy names and roles of people that you want to refer to within your organization. It's just a few clicks to do that in Click Armor. And we can easily customize content for an entire business environment that has specialized roles. So reach out to Click Armor and ask for a free consultation to uh, just discuss your unique security training requirements. That's at clickarmor.ca. All right. And that's all we have for this week's segment. You ready, Scott? Where oh, where much? Where much? This is three weeks in a row we tried to do a, a harmony. I like, a duet. I like it. We'll have to put like it to it. music. We'll have a. No, no, we don't have to do that. Jingle. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody use AI to gen to generate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody could do that. I know one listener in particular. His name is Dave. Dave, if, if, Dave, if you're listening, I'm sure you would probably do this, but. If you're not listening to Dave, you should. Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> so I think with that, we're going to let everyone go here, but uh, great topics today. And uh, thanks for listening. And until next time, stay safe, stay secure, and stay private. Thanks for watching or listening to this episode. Be sure to subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts, follow us on X at SharedSec, and help support the podcast by joining our Patreon to get ad-free episodes, bonus content, and many more exclusive supporter-only benefits. Visit sharedsecurity.net slash supporter for more details.